In this video, we're going to talk about the five pillars of Islam. So before starting this video, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. The fundamental guidelines of Islamic behavior are the five pillars, the profession of faith, shahada, prayer, salah, almsgiving, zakat, fasting, som, and pilgrimage, hajj. Regardless of ethnic, regional, or sectarian differences, they are embraced by Muslims everywhere. All serious Sunni and Shia followers of the Prophet Muhammad are expected to uphold the pillars. Although this does not imply that all people who identify as Muslims do so regularly. Like all religions, there are different situations and different levels of commitment among believers. Age, stage of life, employment, obligations to one's family, health and wealth are all relevant factors. Here are the five pillars of Islam. Number five, pilgrimage, Hajj. The Hajj is one of Islam's five pillars. Every Muslim is required to make the Hajj to Mecca at least once in their lifetime. It takes place in the final month of the Islamic calendar, Dhul Hijjah, and ends with Eid al Adha prayers. The significance of Qurbani derives from the fifth pillar of Islam. The following are part of the Hajj pilgrimage. What is the Hajj ritual of wearing the Ihram? When pilgrims arrive in Mecca, they wear the customary attire. Tawaf and Sa'i prayers are offered in Masjid al-Haram, staying in Mina and praying, praying through the night on Mount Arafat, Musdalfa lodging, stoning the Jamarat and returning to Mina, the three devils. Eid al-Adha prayers should be said, shaving his head according to Abraham's Sunnah, Qurbani, Women only snip a small section of here, engaging in Tawafal Vida. Hajj is by no means a simple voyage, yet it is also not excruciatingly hard. To receive the spiritual gifts from this sacred track, there is a fair degree of struggle that is necessary and, in some cases, required. Millions of Muslims perform the Hajj annually to renew their faith, their taqwa, and improve as people. It can be difficult to pray in the scorching deserts of Arabia. Number 4. Fasting, Psalm. The Ramadan fast, which was instituted in Medina in 624, honors the Prophet Muhammad's first Quranic revelation, which took place in the ninth lunar month. It is a happy and giving time when people develop ties with the religious community and consider the destitute and unprivileged. Muslims who follow their religion strictly abstain from food and drink during the day and break their fast at dusk. Fasting is done in order to develop self-control, piety, generosity. One of Islam's five pillars is fasting. The daily lives of believers are governed by severe restrictions about the restraint of physiological demands and pleasure in addition to prayer. From sunrise to dusk, they must restrain their impulses and refrain from all eating, drink, and sexual activity. They then have a quick, healthy meal to break their fast before having another soon before daybreak. Ramadan is obligatory, yet it is also flexible, demonstrating consideration for those who observe Islam. Whoever of you is present in that month, let him fast. However, those who are ill, are traveling must fast for a similar period of time afterward. God wants you to have ease, not struggle. He wants you to fast the entire month so that you can praise Him for leading you. Quran, Chapter 2, Verse 185 As long as they follow the guidelines and fast continually, followers are free to choose to fast at another period of the year. They must continue fasting for an extra two months for each day they intentionally finish earlier, skip or violate one of the restrictions. A donation of cash or food to those in need can take the place of such an atonement fast. This is also true for those who are not supposed to fast, such those who are chronically ill or who are pregnant for whom fasting could be fatal. This act of kindness toward the underprivileged is not just a punishment, it also serves to increase awareness of communal life. Ramadan is a true celebration that encourages individual fasting, but it's also a time when people come together and share food across familial and religious lines. 
the practice of personal faith and the desire of societal justice go hand in hand. Three ten-day period, each with a different set of prayer intentions, make of the month. We spend the first period pleading with God for His blessing. The second emphasizes confession and forgiving others. The follower begs for deliverance from the flames of hell in the third. On one of the final ten nights with an odd number, Ramadan comes to an end. The holy writings state that this is the night of destiny, Laylatul Qadr, a night that is equal to 1,000 months. It honors the precise time when Muhammad received the Quran, the night of destiny, and its great reward are said to be revealed to the believer who has diligently sought it through prayer and fasting, just as the Quran was revealed to the Prophet. This is said to happen on any night of the final 10 days of Ramadan. On the first day of the following month, Eid al-Fitr, also known as the Lesser Eid, marks the conclusion of Ramadan. Number 3. Giving alms zakat. All Muslims who meet the requirements must perform zakat, the third pillar of Islam, which requires them to donate a predetermined portion of their money to charity. Giving 2.5% of one's productive riches to those in need is not a voluntary act of charity, rather, it's something that every deserving Muslim must do on a yearly basis. Giving zakat has several advantages. The understanding that everything on earth is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is not genuinely ours to own or control. Understanding that we are all born into and depart this world empty. Acknowledging that our position in society and our level of riches are not decisions made by us, but rather by our Lord. Releasing oneself from the need for money and material possessions. Putting self-control to use. Observing mankind learning to give and assist one another. Remaining modest. A technique for enhancing one's own riches. Fostering a society of balance distributing money evenly and equally. And most importantly, submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zakat recipients can be divided into eight groups. The poor. Those in less fortunate situations who have reverted to Islam. Emancipate slaves. For Allah's sake, those who owe money. Administrators of zakat. Travelers who are stuck. Keep in mind that Islam is a faith that fosters and promotes peace and love. Such deeds of kindness and upholding humility are necessary to ensure that we contribute to making the world a better place. Zakat is one of the five pillars of Islam and is required of all the capable Muslims. Use our helpful zakat calculator if you are not sure how much zakat you owe this year. Number 2. Prayer Salat Five times a day, at dawn, noon, mid-afternoon, sunset, and after dark. Muslims pray with their faces towards Mecca. A tiny rock or mat designated for this purpose is occasionally used during prayer, which also includes reciting the first verse surah of the Quran. Muslims may offer their prayers either alone or collectively at a mosque under the direction of an imam. On Fridays at noon, when males congregate in the mosque for prayer, Women are welcome but are not required to attend. The Imam offers prayers and leads a discussion on a specific religious subject after the prayer, which is followed by a lecture that centers on a verse from the Quran. Number 1. Making a religious profession Shahada The first of Islam's five pillars, the Shahada, is the Muslim statement of faith. The Arabic word for testimony is Shahada. Two things are attested to in Shahada. Only God is deserving of worship, Allah. Muhammad is God's messenger, Allah. One who swears and bears witness that nothing deserves worship except God and Muhammad is the messenger of God is simply referred to as Muslim. By making this straightforward confession, one converts to Islam. Every Muslim is required to recite it at least once throughout their lifetime, fully comprehending its significance and assenting to it from the heart. Muslims recite this both before bed as they wake up in the morning. In every mosque, it's recited five times during the call to prayer. The promise of paradise is made to anybody who recites the Shahada as their final act of mortal existence. In the first section of this testimony, it is said that God alone has the right to be worshipped with one's heart 
and limbs as well as externally. According to Islamic belief, there isn't even a possibility of worshipping anyone else beside him. In worship he is without the associates or partners. He alone deserves worship in its fullest essence and in all of its forms. The fundamental essence of Islam's creed, La ilaha illallah, is the God has a right to be worshipped. By affirming the divine right to worship, one becomes Muslim. It's the cornerstone of Islam as a whole and it's the belief in God. The message of Abraham, Isaac, Ismail, Moses, Hebrew prophets, Jesus and Muhammad, may the kindness and blessings of God be upon them, is regarded as the core message of all prophets and messengers delivered by God. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go.